Hey, welcome back to another Black City Coffee vlog. In this video, we are roasting Pioneer. So I'll show you this really, really light profile roast. There it is. Um, as I said before, I make targets, you know, and I try to hit them all the time. Um, I don't underlay the uh, the profile <laughs> under the <laughs> under like a, a roast. Like, so if you make a profile, you can have like some software you can underlay it. Now. I can do that with Rose Path. The problem is, is like, I don't know if it's my computer or whatever, but once I roast a, a certain underlay of this, um, of a, of a particular coffee and I want to move on to a, another coffee, it's really difficult for me. It's not really difficult, but it's annoying. I can't move at a speed that I like to, to make sure like, uh, the right underlay is underneath it. So I just don't like it in a workflow situation, but uh, I know what targets I need to hit, so I don't necessarily need the underlay, but that would have been, you know, I know that's the best way to do it, to be consistent. Okay, so here are the tasting notes for Pioneer. We've got tropical food smoothie, green apple candy, sweet raspberry jam, crisp and sweet. Okay, so these are the notes um, that I want to retain the longer I go. You'll see that, you know, the last phase, when we get into it, the last phase is really short. Um, and that's because if I go any longer, I lose these, you know? So it all depends on like what you want to do with your roast and what you want to bring out or accentuate or whatever it may be, uh, because you're, you know, you're at the helm of the ship and you're steering the ship and making sure that you get all the flavors that you want as a roaster. No wrong answers, uh, there. So, okay, here we go. We're gonna select Pioneer. Um, and yeah, like I said, it's smarter <laughs> to underlay it, but I think my computer's kind of whack and it doesn't really uh, allow me to move quickly in between different underlay profiles. So it's more annoying to do that. Um, and uh, for the most part, I'm consistently hitting my targets without the underlay. So I, I choose not to do it. Um, but that would be ideal, you know, so I could just see without a guess that I'm hitting all my targets and I'm, oh, I'm under my profile, over my profile, whatever. Okay. Um, so if you have the option to do that and underlay your profile, do it, but I'm blaming it all on the computer. <laughs> it's so, it's so, uh, wonky. All right, so we just charged the coffee. We're doing a 350 charge for this coffee. This is a natural processed coffee. Um, a little bit lower elevation as well, so you gotta go gently. And it can kind of take off on you, meaning, when, when we say take off, you know, you may, you may hear that with other roasters, meaning that it can absorb heat very quickly and then start to, um, well, that's, you know, in the context of this, this conversation take on heat really quickly and uh that's just what that means so take off quickly so it can take off pretty quickly after it gets pretty heated up because it's a natural because it's low elevation um you know after it dries out it can take off pretty quickly so you have to roast it gently or kind of like um i find it really similar to roasting decaf uh the decafs that i've roasted Yeah, so, you know, I put out the other video showing you guys what a medium roast look like, and we're gonna compare it to this very light roasted coffee. Um, and you'll see that, you know, when we talk about light roasts, there's a couple of boxes, like for me, that I like to check off. So it's it's color, it's finishing time, um, it's uh, final bean temperature, um, its uh, physical characteristics, what it looks like. Um, but in the cup, when we're talking about light roasts, and we'll get into this a little bit more, but Justin asked this, and so I'm gonna, I'm just, it's in my mind right now, which is acidity. 
you know, a certain amount of acidity in the cup that we're trying to maintain or accentuate. Um, and the more you roast something, typically, the, the less acidity the cup will have in the end. Um, and we'll get into that. We'll talk about acidity versus sweetness and what that means for the roast and the roast profile and being a roaster and deciding what you want to do with a certain coffee. We'll get into that. I think that's really, um, I'm excited to make that because I think that's, that's kind of where it's all, where it's uh, at modulating the flavor um, at the roaster so you can, you know, bring about the acidity that you need. So I'm not, uh, I'm not um, discharging the co the Pioneer. That was the last coffee, so it's cooled down now. And so I'll typically do this when I'm in production, basically like roasting back to back is, you know, I charge a coffee and I'll be discharging a coffee or bagging a coffee at the same time. Um, and it's just to save time and be more efficient. Um, and because it's such a small machine, you don't have to wait so long for it to, you know, reach the temperatures that you need. Whereas, you know, I would imagine, you know, like some 26 kilo machine, you've got to wait a little bit for it to keep maintaining the right temperature. But I think we're good here. So right now we've already hit turning point and we're waiting for the coffee to dry out and reach dry end or green to yellow transition. And we will mark that when we visually see and um, see like a, a marker in the temperature at 300 degrees. And everything kind of looks good. We'll mark that um, on the screen and then increase the air to 50 or a medium airflow. Um, and then uh, lower the heat down. And you guys are gonna see how much I will lower the heat for this particular natural process coffee. So um, the only difference between like, say natural and say decaf, because they rose, they rose really similarly, is um, maybe the fuel application. Okay, so we've just hit dry end and I'm thinking I need to uh, decrease the heat quite a bit here. And you're always carrying a little bit more energy or heat in the machine after your first roast. Your first roast should be a coffee that you don't need to have a lot of energy to roast. So typically the first roast is like a decaf or a low, you know, uh, low elevation coffee. Um, even Pioneer, I think, would be kind of okay to, to roast first out of the gate. But if I can always help it um, and I have some decaf to roast, I will roast decaf first out the gate because the machine is cold. It's not retaining as much heat. It's not as um, consistent in how much heat it's holding. Um, it's not going to be as responsive. And you'll, you'll notice that when you, like, take your, your machine into the second, third, fifth roasts, sixth roast, you know, it's going to be quite a bit uh, hotter, running hotter, um, if you have a little machine like mine. So right now we're just going to wait and ride out and make sure we get a solid middle phase. And uh, we discussed in a previous video that if I keep my middle phase at least three minutes 30, you know, um, trying really not to go over four minutes, um, I can retain all of the acidity that I want in the cup for the most part. And the longer that I take that middle phase, even though I cut off, I cut off my, um, my final phase pretty early, I'm not going to retain all of those acidity markers for me. And that, and that's a really like, it's not, it's not been well tested, like test over test over test or, um, but that's just been my experience so far. So we're gonna try to keep cranking the heat down. As you can see already, we're at 0.5 on the heat there and we're gonna keep coming down all the way up until uh, first crack because again, the coffee inside there is now going to be radiating its own heat back. So that's why it's really, um, 
for me in the beginning, it was really difficult for me to maintain or control the heat at this point before first crack. And that just meant I had to um, stop giving it so much energy, stop giving it so much heat, you know, right before first crack in my case, you know, and the way that I roast. So looks like we're listening for first crack now. And I'm trying to make sure that I'm not, you know, I'm looking at that ROR curve and I'm not giving it too much heat at this point. Now we check the flame, always check the flame because now I'm doing very, very minuscule adjustments to the fuel. And um, I'll get down to like a little orange flame, you know, because when you're full blast, you see nice bright blue flame, right? Really, really hot. And then I'll get even down to the nice little orange flame. So right here, I'm trying to wait for first crack. Oh, by the way, this crack, um, natural process coffees, generally roasting gentler or slower, general, 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 you're gonna get a quiet crack. Um, this coffee does not crack very loud. You have to really listen for it and some coffees, I I wait for like a pop, pop, pop. And this coffee, it doesn't give me that. <laughs> and if I were to wait for the pop, 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 um, it doesn't work, you know? Um, I lose acidity. I roast the middle too long. There you go, first crack. A little later than I'd like. Um, I'd like that to be at a, you know, at a standard, you know, eight minutes 30. So I feel like that's a little longer than I'd like. And uh, hopefully I didn't I didn't miss it. Um, this this coffee I roasted for uh, the house. I don't have any coffee left, so I roasted this for the house. <clears throat> um, and yeah, so I when I cup this in a couple of days, um, I'm going to be checking for that acidity. Did I lose it? You know because I went a little longer. I, may, I went like 10 seconds, 20 seconds longer than I intended. And then we're gonna drop. Pretty soon, bam. And when you drop this soon, it feels awkward. It feels weird, <laughs> believe me. Um, but you know, that's what it is to have control uh, over your roast is like, I'm gonna do this um, and know why I'm doing it. Right, not just because so and so told me or whatever, um, but because this is what I feel captures what this this coffee has to offer, um, and so I present it this way, you know. Even though you you read in a book and you may be coming into roasting and be like, oh, I thought it's supposed to be a 40, 40, 20 overall roast time. Um, yeah, that can work for some coffees. That can work for uh, maybe a washed coffee. Um, from, I don't know, uh, from uh, South America or something and still retain some of those light qualities of that coffee and how it presents. All right, we save and we record and that's it. All right, so taking a look again at the roast profile, the total roast profile, bring that in here. Um, Yeah, uh, I feel like this one just a little bit too longer on the middle phase than I had intended. And um, that could have been that little dip that you see in the middle there um, of me coming down just maybe a bit too much, you know. And that 10 to 20 seconds difference um, of hitting first crack was maybe not the best, but I don't know that for sure. So I'm always gonna cup to kind of like quality control and make sure. And then um, if it is indeed like, oh, I lost all my flavors, which I doubt, I doubt that's the case. Uh, you may just get a little bit more chocolatey or sweeter notes in here. Um, it won't be a total loss, but um, yeah. So that happens. Um, that's just clearly like what can happen when you're trying to be consistent and how much 10 seconds, 20 seconds can make. But, you know, again, this is all conjecture. I'm gonna cup this, uh, kind of make sure for myself, and then make those adjustments that I need to. All right, so I hope that was helpful and uh, we will see you in the next one.